Are we all living in a computer simulation created by super intelligent beings? A Swedish philosopher proposed that very idea back in 2003, but now a new theory is taking things one crazier step further, suggesting that we are living in a simulation made of pure thought, as in we aren't living in a supercomputer, but rather everything you do and see and taste, everything, it's just information in an idea. In other words, you aren't physically real, nothing else is either. Is your mind blown yet? Kennedy recently discussed this theory with best-selling author, professor, and theoretical physicist, Dr. Michio Kaku. Check it out. So tell me about the idea of immaterialism manifesting as our universe. Well, we've all seen the movie The Matrix. And then you begin to wonder, computer games are getting so realistic that maybe these avatars are real. And maybe we, maybe we are avatars. Maybe we are nothing but cosmic digitized figures dancing on somebody's computer screen. And then to take it one step even farther than that, let's say that this person who hits the play button mm -hmm. starting this video game has a dream. And we are the dream. And so cosmic consciousness then determines the existence of reality itself. And so that gives an entirely new meaning to the question of, is reality just a dream, a figment of somebody's subconscious dreaming? Mm -hmm. Well, believe it or not, quantum physicists are looking at some of these ideas rather carefully. And what do they, what do they gather from... Uh, the proposition that it is a, a simulation and the, the principle of efficient language which doesn't qu require materialism or a physical universe. Well, I tend to be skeptical of these ideas that say that the matrix is reality because of something called the butterfly effect. The weather is so complicated that even the fluttering of a butterfly's wing can create a cascade of tipping points to tip over a hurricane or a storm. So, in other words, it's very difficult to simulate the weather, as you see by looking at the weather report every evening on the evening news. And so if we cannot simulate the weather, then how can we possibly simulate reality? And then how can reality itself be a quantum dream mm -hmm. of some super being? So, you see, science is based on things that are testable and reproducible. Mm -hmm. So the idea that reality itself is pure consciousness is not a testable idea. But it's great to talk about at dinner table. Uh, it's that's also, it's, that's also the, the basis of... Buddhism, though, that, uh, that matter is really compressed energy. That's right. And so we have to realize that the ancient philosophers got some of these things right, mm -hmm. because they realized that materialism, the idea that we're just atoms, that that's all we are, is limited. So now we're talking about wormholes, we're talking about bending space-time, we're talking about uh, superliminal velocities, far beyond the simple materialistic idea that we're just made out of atoms. Mm -hmm. But there has to be something to that. I mean, when you look at, when you look at consciousness in and of itself and the longing to know answers and to uh, want to abstract the nature of reality and know it from what you see around you, there aren't very many beings, it seems, that can do that. So if, if we can do that at a, a greater, an exponentially greater degree than uh, the objects around us and, and the, the vertebrates around us, then why wouldn't there be super beings who are capable of constructing something that to you know, us simpletons looked and felt like reality? Well, that's the idea, the idea that a cosmic being of some sort created a computer game, pushed the play button, and here we are as digital puppets, protesting the fact that we are real, that we have free will, we are masters of our destiny, when actually it's just somebody hitting the play button of their computer screen. And it gets even worse if that computer screen itself is a byproduct of pure consciousness. You see, in quantum theory, Things are not real until they're measured. Mm -hmm. But measurement requires consciousness. 
Only conscious beings can measure things. And so lasers, transistors, computers, the internet, all of it is based on the quantum principle that consciousness determines existence. But what about, what about the measurement problem, that once you measure something, you change the very thing that you're measuring? That's right. Well, journalists know that, right? Because every time you interview people at a riot or demonstration, uh, you change the behavior of the people that you are interviewing for your show. That's a great example. And that happens with atoms as well. It's called the Heisenberg uncertainty effect. Now, some of you may say, why should I learn the Heisenberg uncertainty effect? It's the reason why we have lasers, transistors, MRI machines. All these are wonders of the quantum theory, which is dependent upon these bizarre ideas of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I love it so much. Well, uh, I would just like to appeal uh, to the programmer of the game that uh, I get a really nice new Tesla. I think that that would be fun. I've never driven one. And uh, if, if, if that happens, if that falls in my lap, then we got to talk again because uh, someone's got some explaining to do. Dr. Mitchell Kaku, yeah. I, I love the way your brain works. I love the way you explain things. Uh, no question is too silly or too simple for you. And uh, man, are you a good one. Thanks for spending some time here. I appreciate it.